not a good week. In fact, to be honest with you, I was mostly frustrated the entire week in my reaction to a recent publication on a uh, well-known media outlet. Uh, it was an article that Bill Loretti, uh, Ray Tuck, Keith Overland were all a part of. It was a research-driven and fact-driven article that I was excited to be a part of. However, what I wrote in the article that came out uh, were much different. We used peer-reviewed journals. Uh, we used a ton of good research and facts to put out the information we wanted to uh, get out about our profession. The counterpoint from a different profession was much different. Uh, it was based on Medscape searches and case studies. And unfortunately, uh, when the article is published, what do you do? Um, you can have an argument, you can um, uh, you know, put comments in the journal, but the simple fact is the general public is going to look at that research and they're not going to understand the difference between those different kinds of articles. If we want to change the opinion of the masses, we have to provide a simple solution to a common problem and then provide data that's easy to understand and reputable. Without that data and with that preconceived notion about what chiropractic is, this is going to continue to play out for the next several hundred years. I've made it my personal mission to not get caught up and to not let this happen again. We work day and night at Cairo up to change the perception of where our profession is going. We're going to see this change, but for now, here's my response. Here's a written version of the blog you can look uh, below. However, my response is quite simple in these kind of situations. Chiropractic is not a treatment. It's a profession. And as a profession, we're all trained medical professionals, unique uh, to solve many health conditions. Chiropractors use treatments including joint manipulation, physical therapy modalities, patient education, manual therapy, nutrition, rehabilitation exercises, or what have you to address each person's unique situation. As chronic pain continues to rise within the U.S. healthcare systems, we have to continue to use these proven methods to reduce pain and disability without the need for medications and surgeries. If we can do this, we can do it repeatedly, and we can get data on this, that's why people are going to visit chiropractors in the future. So what can we solve? What can we help with? Chronic pain. Most people associate chiropractors with low back pain, and rightly so. Low back pain plagues our society as one of the most common causes of disability in healthcare expenditures. Joint dysfunction in the lower back is a primary risk factor to the development and progression of lower back pain and degeneration. Fortunately, that's what we do. As chiropractors, we have the research to show that we can improve the mobility of these joints through spinal manipulation, exercise, and education. Most of our patients get this reduced pain in the first visit. There is no secret to why people want to continue to come see us. Nagging neck pain. Nagging pain in the neck is the second most common reason people come to see us. There are changes to daily habits and stresses and workstation ergonomics, which we're seeing in the current pandemic, are among the most common reasons people get a stiff neck. And left untreated, they're gonna experience restricted joints, unnecessary compression, less range of motion, and that's where we're gonna see future degeneration. Luckily, spinal manipulation delivered by chiropractors has unrivaled success and safety for those types of pains and patients. Manipulation in conjunction with exercise, posture re-education often alleviates symptoms quickly, repeatedly, we do it safely. Persistent pain. A chiropractor will spend the most time to understand a patient's unique presentation. We are the best at patient satisfaction because we care. We're going to perform the right physical exam. We're going to do the right kind of imaging. We're going to understand that patient's presentation entirely. We understand that patient's uh, pain is multidimensional, affecting all areas of life, and we should reflect that in our treatment plan. It's not one treatment fits all. We have to address each person as an individual. The fourth is headaches. Headaches are really the crux behind what we do. Sometimes a scary population, but 15 to 25 percent of all headaches originate from the cervical spine. If we can provide a safe multifaceted approach using spinal manipulation as a cornerstone to treatment, there are a plethora of studies to demonstrate the effectiveness of spinal manipulation for cervical genetic headaches. You can find them all in Kairawa. A recent journal in spine study found that spinal manipulation can cut the number of symptomatic headache days in half. In half. 
and the number of treatment has a linear dose response to improvement, meaning we can keep these people out of pain. We have to make sure the public understands the successes we have with spinal manipulation and with our treatments. The last piece of this puzzle that I thought was so important for this article is chiropractors can help avoid long-term opioid dependence. Opioid prescriptions is typically um, a very common thing that we're gonna see as, as prescribed for pain. It starts with acute pain. It doesn't start with chronic pain. It starts with acute musculoskeletal damage. We have to make sure that we can address that mechanical pain instantly and don't allow it to go into chemical pain or chronicity and, a, and then start to use uh, chemical uh, treatments. Opioid dependence and uh, tolerance uh, and addiction often are starting from that acute problem. We have to make sure that we address that instantly and we can avoid this problem from moving forward. More than 25% of chronic use of opioids result from a very acute uh, situation, a surgery, a procedure. We have to make sure the public understands what we do. We have to understand that we do that to every single patient. And we have some kind of recipe to get these people out of pain that is now transferable to other professionals, other chiropractors in different states and different locations. If we can do that repeatedly and we can do it uh, for a long period of time and we can start to develop data when it comes to these things that we can do for patients, that's how we'll change the perception of where chiropractic is and where it's going. I've included a list of references to everything I talked about at the end of the blog. Uh, check it out. If you ever want to hear more or help with our public outreach and the marketing that we do uh, for the profession, uh, please let us know. My email is brandon at chirup.com. Also, at the very bottom of this blog, you're going to see a link to an infographic. That infographic can be used by you and your practice to help educate patients about what are the benefits of chiropractic and when should you consider seeing a chiropractor. I hope you'll consider using it with your patients so we can start to educate people on what we do and what we don't do. Thanks for listening.